All right, today, as promised, I want to start off with the uh, shoots and ladders simulation that I made in Mathematica. Of course, shoots and ladders, the game, that's one of the first games I ever played when I was a kid. Uh, that's what the old board looked like a long time ago. It's up been updated. That's kind of what I remember. And you, there's a spinner that spins one through six. You, you don't start on, on uh, square one, because if you did, you'd go up the ladder to square 38 right away. So you start off the board and you spin the spinner. If you get a one, that's great, because you go up to 38. If you get a two, then you land there. A three, land there. Get a four, you land there. You go up this ladder to 14. Did I call this ladder a shoot? It's a ladder. Or five or six. When you uh, you ladders are good because you go up. Shoots are bad because you go down, and you're trying to get to the end. Be the first person to get to the end, and it's kind of dangerous up near the top because there's lots of shoots up there. Uh, meaning it's it makes it a little difficult to get down uh, to actually finish the game because of that. Uh, you go up ladders when you supposedly do something good, and you go down shoots when you do something naughty. How can this possibly be simulated and, and why would we want to simulate it? Well, I wanted to simulate it just because I was interested in it. And it seemed necessary to simulate it because it's like hard, hard to think about theoretically. You know, the shoots and the ladders are in kind of random places and they go up or down kind of random amounts. Yeah, you have a spinner that spins one, two, three, four, five, or six with equal probability. But how in the world do you account for the shoots and the ladders? Well, you do have to keep track of where they are. So the first ladder goes from spot one to spot 38, then the second one from four to 14, the third one from nine to 31, et cetera. And the shoots go down, 16 goes down to six, 47 goes down to 26. The really bad one is, uh, where is it? 62 goes way down to 19. That's when you really do something bad. Can this be simulated? I made what seems to be a pretty good simulation to me. I think it works. And what, what I'm interested in is the distribution of the number of spins to win, right? How many spins on average does it take you to finish the game? And what I found is on average, it takes around 30 spins to win the game. Of course, you're playing against somebody else, so they might beat you, but uh, that's what the average is. So I'm using Mathematica here to um, simulate this. And the first function in Mathematica that I created, I called shoot ladder, which keeps track of all what happens when you go up ladders or down shoots. I had to use Mathematica's which function, which is essentially a big piecewise function. Essentially, this syntax says if x is 1, then the output's 38. That represents the ladder going from 1 to 38. If x is 4, then the output is 14. That represents the ladder going from 4 to 14. Down here, if X is 93, then the output is 73. That represents the shoot going from 93 down to 73. If X is greater than or equal to 100, we effectively stop. We keep the output at 100. Actually, the output wouldn't get bigger than 100, so I didn't really need to put greater than or equal to there. And if X is less than 100, but not one of these other ones, evidently, because I, you sort of go through this which uh, command in order. Then I keep the output at X. And effectively, this is just trying to keep track of the shoots and the ladders. But the 100 there means also that uh, when you get to 100, you stop. The output is 100. So I enter that. And we can, for example, see that it works. Shoot ladder of the input 49, for example. I see when X is 49, I should get an output of 11. And if I put in, say, 50, there is no shoot or ladder that starts at 50. So the output should be x itself. It should be 50. I stay where I am. So this doesn't represent moving when you're at a tile that is not the start of a shoot or a ladder. Staying there. But I need to spin as well. Spin and move takes into account the fact that you're going to flick the spinner and get one, two, three, four, five, or six, and then move as well, not taking into account shoots and ladders. 
So notice this function spin and move takes an input X and takes that value of X and adds, hey, there's random variant. Random variant, discrete uniform distribution one six. That's spinning, right? One, two, three, four, five, six all occur with equal probability. Of course, we could use a die as well instead of a spinner. Discrete uniform distribution, those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and six all occur with probability one sixth. And random variant is going to then simulate sampling from that distribution. And I'm adding it to, to X. So for example, if I plug in five, the output is going to be five plus some random number between one and six with equal probability. So it could be, the answer could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or 11 with equal probability. But you're never going to get something less than six or more than 11 here. I can keep re entering it. By the way, if you do a colon equals like that, that'll help you get different things when you re enter stuff, stuff like this. Actually, there an equal sign would, would do the same thing, but there's other places where it's safer to do a colon equals. Okay, never get more than a 11 or less than a six. Full turn combines the two. So I'm at location X. First, I'm going to spin and move. I'm assuming I ha I've already done the output of a shooter or a ladder, and I'm now at location X. I'm going to spin and move first, and then plug it into shoot ladder. If the output of spin and move is at a spot where there's a shooter or a ladder, then you apply the shooter or ladder and you move. If it's not, then you stay where you were, right? That's why I have the output be X if it was not one of these. This represents staying where you are. So for example, if I apply full turn to 50, for example, or maybe I should do it to a say 48. Why did I pick 48 here? Because I know that uh, at 49, there was a, a shoot going down to 11. <clears throat> the output could be 50, 51. It could not be 49. Because if spin and move brings me to 49, then shoot ladder brings me down to 11. There's no way I'm going to get 49 here. I might get an 11. I got a 67. There must have been a ladder that went up as well. Come on. There's an 11. One of the outputs was 67. What was it, 67? That was, must have been some ladder. Yeah, if you get a 51, you go up to 67. Now I can iterate full turn with something called nest list to simulate playing the game by yourself. Init position means you're just starting off the board at position zero. Nest list is going to iterate this full turn function based on an initial position that I'm picking to be zero, so it's the start of the game. But I could pick something non-zero to start simulate starting at some other spot. There we go. I did 50 iterations. And wow, that was a quick game, actually. The game was one and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spins. Wait a minute. I must, there must be some error here because there's no ladder that goes up to 100. I must, there's, there's some error here. Okay, I've got to fix something somewhere here. Does it really? Does it go to 100? Wow, I, I, I forgot that. So if you land on 80, you win. Okay. So the next spin here brought you to 80, 74 plus six going up to 100. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plays, nine spins. That's a pretty quick game. There it took more. Here it take, took even more. But it does seem like if you keep entering this, you definitely win within 50 spins at some point because you keep getting 100. Actually, if you use nest while list, you can stop it once you get to 100. Essentially, this is going to apply full turn until you get a while you are less than 100, effectively. Once we get to 100, it stops. That, that game took a long time. So this is simulating a game and stopping once you reach 100. So 
the length of this list represents the number of spins, actually minus one. I should subtract one from this. So now I'm using table to essentially do this over and over again and find the length of this list, which is the number of spins, except I have to subtract one from it because effectively I need to take off counting the zero. That's some data. I can look at these data. I can make a histogram of it. I can calculate the mean and I can calculate the standard deviation. So there's a histogram of the number of spins to win the game. For example, this first one says there were in a, this was a simulation of size a thousand, a thousand, a thousand simulated games. Looks like 12 of them. Uh, won the game within what would this be about uh hmm. it's not clear it's not going down to zero there somewhere between maybe two and eight win uh spins about 98 of them i you can't see that number it says 98 98 of them took between about maybe it's about uh, eight and 14 spins the mode is somewhere between about 20 and 26 spins but the mean is bigger the means closer to well the mean for this simulation is 30.5 because it's a long right tail and i could do this over again i think if i re-enter this even as is because i did a colon equals here instead of an equals i think it'll redo the simulation and give me a different graph with a different mean and different standard deviation yep but not too different. Okay. Question, are there any well-known distributions that are a good model? I don't know, I haven't tried, but you need a density function, a PDF that has a graph that goes up and then down about like that with a heavy right tail, a long right tail. Some sort of gamma distribution perhaps maybe something to guess as one possibility. Maybe maybe something simpler, a, a sub distribution, a chi square, that might be too simple. Two parameters is probably something better to go for. Chi square just has degrees of freedom, whereas gamma has alpha and beta parameters. So I'll probably try figuring out if, um, to see if I can find a good fitter or not at some point as, as part of this class. We can do it as part of this class even. 